Yes, I have 10 o'clock on the dot. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Old Saratoga on this spectacular spring morning. Goodness, could we have nicer weather than it is this morning? Yes, we had just as nice weather yesterday for our spring cleanup here at the church. We did so much and uh, I invite everybody to walk around and look and wonder and uh, dream along with those of us who worked. We didn't finish the list and the more you look, the more you see. So the list kind of grew as we worked. So we're, several of us are gonna come back next Saturday from nine to noon, praying for equally good weather just because it's so buoyant when the weather is nice. Um, and inviting anybody who couldn't come yesterday and maybe can come next Saturday, uh, pop in and give us a hand. We've still got a couple of closets to pull apart and reconfigure and there's always a little bit of extra cleaning to do. So thank you to everyone who worked so hard yesterday, including the Sheelys who restrung the rope to the bell hammer. So if you look in the back, you see one nice straight rope that's been there and the other rope is kind of wiggly squiggly because it was recently, it was just hanged, hung yesterday. So very exciting and I'm sure Paula would be excited to <laughs> explain the process because uh, it was harrowing <laughs> from all accounts. Um, other announcements in two weeks I guess I after worship downstairs in Loomis Hall I'm going to share a PowerPoint presentation of my sabbatical trip to Israel. I had a theme when I went I was looking for color and support for the book on John's Gospel I've been working on forever. Um, so this was part of that. And so the, the photographs kind of follow the theme of John's Gospel. It's about 45 minutes of pictures and commentary maybe with time for questions. And I also have a table full of odds and ends like maps and stuff to give you a sense of um, the Israel of Jesus time. So that's in two weeks. Bring your friends. Um, other announcements that need to be highlighted today? Let us prepare ourselves for worship by listening to the sound of the bell and our prelude this morning. Thank you. 
day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, from Jesus Christ our Redeemer, and from the Holy Spirit this day and always. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. Our first hymn this morning is number 317. And join me in reading responsively the call to worship that is based on Psalm 31, which is the psalm for today. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me be put to shame. This is God's house, which is always open to all God's children. It is a sacred space, and it is prepared for us all. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. We have made different journeys, recognizing they all lead to this place. It is a sacred space, and it is prepared for us all. My times are in your hand, O God. Indeed, the life of each person is held in God's time. It is a sacred space, and it is prepared for us all. Let us pray together the unison gathering prayer. Creator, you have shaped a place for us made of love and held in grace. It is filled with the whispers of the ancients who followed you and sculpted our faith. Breathe into this place again that we may know your way, your truth, and your life. Amen. Well, I really wanted to bring for the children's message today a map of Saratoga, a road map of Saratoga County, uh, but I have been searching for one, trying to find a source since I moved here. I have a map of New York State, which is, but I wanted the kind of byways and, and roadways in this immediate area so I could study it and kind of get a big sense of where I was going. It's hard to know where we're going, especially if you don't have some kind of a map. We used to rely on paper maps, and I like to study that up front, but nowadays, of course, most of us, I would say, rely on the GPS on our telephones that we carry with us. So for directions, I can go here, I can, whoops, close that, I can open that, I can go to the 
app that gives me the directions and plug in an address and wind up being told when to go left, when to go right, how far the next street light is, where the next turn is, even which lane to be on. It's very handy, that, that thing. Um, and there was a time when people wouldn't take a trip without the paper map to, to refer to. And nowadays, I think we all try to make sure our phones are charged up before we take a trip. And, and when you miss a turn, which happens frequently, um, not knowing the roads, it, it will tell you to turn around, to recalculate, to turn the other direction now because you're coming from the other side. It's very handy. Um, well, when Jesus was preparing to go to heaven to be with God, he told his disciples, you know the place where I'm going and I will make everything ready for you. And two of his disciples, Thomas in particular, said, no, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to God except through me. And then Philip, the other disciple who was there, joined in and said, well, show us God, and we will be satisfied. And poor Jesus said, have you been with me all of this time, and you still don't know who I am? If you have seen me, then you have seen God. So anyone, he said, who believes in me will do the same things that I have done. And that was all the disciples needed to know. That was all the direction they needed to be on the right path to be with God. So the question for today kind of is, how do you and I find our way to the place where Jesus has gone to be with God the Father? We haven't seen Jesus in the flesh the way Thomas and Philip had, but we can certainly follow the teachings of Jesus that we learn from this book, the Bible. That is God's holy word, and in, in a way, it's our GPS for our faith, and that will keep us on the right path. Let's pray about that this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son to provide the way to eternal life. Thank you for your holy word, which will keep us on the right path in our journey through life. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as part of our journey in our lives, we need to recognize probably on a daily basis that we haven't been perfect. And confident of God's loving kindness and forgiveness, we are invited to make our prayers of confession here as part of our approach to God in worship, confident of God's loving kindness and forgiveness. Please join me in reading the prayer of confession from our bulletins for today. God, I come to you, chosen and precious in your sight. I bring to you all that I am, including those things in my life that I carry like stones that weigh me down, the burdens that hurt, the sins that break and bruise the world, and I lay them down here, all that prevents me from knowing the abundant life you offer. And our prayers continue in the silence of our hearts as we consider how those words affect our lives. Amen. Let us with a 
hear these words of assurance of God's forgiveness from 1 Peter. Jesus hears our confessions and takes them in love, redeems and transforms them, forming you into a holy house, a sacred community, rebuilt in grace and dedicated to God. Jesus said, see I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in me will not be put to shame. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to take a break because I realize I skipped the second hymn, and I'm sure it was a Freudian slip because I am not that familiar with it, and I'm praying that you are. But as always, by the end of the hymn, we will all be familiar with it. So I invite you to stand as you are able and join me in singing hymn number 246. Rather than have you pop up and down, I'm going to forego the Gloria Patri today, Barbara. <laughs> I've already messed you up tremendously, but I do want to remind us, particularly on this Communion Sunday of the Law of God, as Jesus taught it, taken from the laws of Deuteronomy and reframed for God's people through Christ. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your spirit, and with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
On these two laws depend all the law and the prophets. This is the good news of the gospel. Therefore, we turn our hearts and our minds and our spirits to the love of God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy, loving Father, as we hear your word, guide us and teach us. May they inspire us to live your word and to love one another as you love us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. From Acts, the stoning of Stephen. Stephen, full of Holy Spirit, looked up to the heavens and saw God's glory and Jesus standing at the right side of God. Look, he said, see, I see heaven opened and the Son of Man standing at the right side of God. With a loud cry, the council members covered their ears with their hands, and then they rushed at him all at once, threw him out of the city and stoned him. The witnesses left their clothes in the care of the young man named Saul. They kept on stoning Stephen as he called out to the Lord, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not remember this sin against them. He said this and died. And from Peter, be like a newborn babies, always thirsty for the pure spiritual milk, so that by drinking it, you may grow up and be saved. As the scripture says, you have found out for yourselves how to be kind, how kind the Lord is. Come to the Lord, the living stone, rejected by man as worthless, but chosen by God as valuable. Come as living stones and let yourself be used in building this spiritual temple where you will serve as holy priests to offer spiritual and acceptable sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. For the scripture says, I chose a valuable stone which I am placing in the cornerstone in Zion, and whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. This stone is of great value for you that believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. And another scripture says, this is the stone that will make people stumble, the rock that will make them fall. They stumble because they did not believe in the word, such as God's will for them. But you are the chosen race, the, God's, the king's priests, the holy nation, God's own people, chosen to proclaim the wonderful acts of God, who called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. At one time you were not God's people, but now you are his people. At one time you did not know God's mercy but now you have received his mercy. And from the Gospel of John, do not be worried and be upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house and I'm going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and I will take you to myself I will take you to myself and that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, "Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way to get there?" Jesus answered him, "I am the way, the truth, the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you know me, he said to them, you will know my father also. And from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father. That is all we need. Jesus answered him, for a long time I have been with you all, yet you do not know me. Philip, whoever has seen me has seen the father. Why then do you say, show, show us the Father? 
Do you not believe, Philip, that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I have spoken to you, Jesus said to the disciples, do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am the Father and the Father is in me. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Whoever believes in me will do what I do. Yes, he will do even greater things because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask for in my name and so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, who knows, Billy Joel? She's got a way about her. <laughs> and you know what that means, you know? Through the, the lyrics of the song, you kind of learn that love that Billy Joel carries for her. Um, and then we have Barbara Streisand's iconic song, um, The Way We Were, oh, Robert Redford. Um, other ways, something in the way she moves attracts me like no other lover, right? Beatles? Um, we know exactly what all of them mean. We're just not always exactly sure how it works. Um, that mystical way. They're singing about the way of love. And honestly, so is Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, in being questioned by Thomas and Philip, says, we all know the way to get to where he is going, where he has gone to prepare a place for us when we follow him. The key to this way is that it's not really a, a destination, it's a journey. We can't just say, I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm a completed work of a Christian. I'm good to go. I have my ticket to heaven. No, it's, it's the beginning of a lifelong journey, a struggle to stay on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. It's a process that continues our whole life long sorting it out as we go. Those iconic words of Jesus, no one gets to the Father except through me, have been misused and abused and historically uh, used as the foundation to be exclusive. Those poor people who don't know Jesus, what becomes of them? Those babies who, are, who die without being baptized, they wind up in limbo. Thank you, Abelard. Uh, well, if Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, what does that mean? He said, we know the way, we know Jesus. Um, in, in our text today, the way, the truth, and the life can stand as separate assertions um, of who Jesus is. We can take that definition, and when we say we believe in Jesus, we believe in that phrase. The words can modify one another. Uh, for example, Jesus is the way and truth that lead to life, that inform our lives. Jesus is the way that leads to truth and life. Hmm or Jesus is the true way of life. Greek is like that, it's a jumble. And how you translate it is how you understand it very often. Jesus' way was not one of exclusion. 
It was one of inclusion. He included the lowly, the marginalized, the women, the sick, the lepers, uh, the, the filthy. Uh, his truth was always God's love. Know me, know the Father. And his life was one of service. He says that over and over, and he demonstrates it up to the very last moment of his life here on earth. Um, but when asked what the greatest enemy of Christianity is in the world today, this goes back a ways, uh, Mahatma Gandhi replied, the greatest enemy of the way of Christ in the world today, he said, is Christians. People would rather build a temple than be one in the world. And at the heart of this passage in John is both what constitutes a follower of Christ, a Christian, and what defines a congregation as well. Living stones, Peter says, um, building a ministry together in Christ's name, following the way of inclusion and of love and of peace and service. So we have to ask ourselves, what, what is a living stone anyway? I'm following through those readings. And back, gosh, when I first became aware of ministry as a possibility, service as an adult, as a Christian, the Regional Synod of Albany had a program called Living Stones, where you could take courses on how to pray, how to preach, um, how to read the Bible in a more informed way. And so that kind of began my discernment journey, living stones. How are we living stones? If Christ is the cornerstone, that headpiece that holds it all together, how are we part of that construct as well? Um, it's also like stones in a riverbed. We have them outside the church here around the, the foundation. I think those are river pebbles rubbed and tossed and worn as a group together by uh, the water and the seasons so the hard edges are rubbed off. That's part of the strength and the challenge of being part of a community of Christians, part of a congregation, and we struggle with this, it seems like, all the time uh, when someone uh, throws out something that uh, we think should be saved or when the color of the carpet is discussed and maybe it shouldn't be read the next time. Um, how we interact and rub each other's hard edges off is part of being those living stones in the world. It's not just holding up the building as a foundation, it's also holding up one another and looking to serve the future people who might be here. Uh, it's the difference between someone buying a present because it's something that you really want, yeah, and, and buying something because you know it's exactly what the other person wants. It's a mindset. Uh, thinking of Christ first walk in Christ's way and making it your own, being that inclusive person, being that kind serving person, um, taking that cognitive work of just being an individual and acknowledging that there's a way about being a Christian that is special and that it is attractive in a way unlike any other because we live first as children of God together in the world. So how does that rationally affect how we behave, how we dress, how we present ourselves in the world, how we speak to one another, how we speak about one another, how we resolve disagreements, even how we pray? God as our rock and our fortress. And in Stephen's dying moments, um, the rocks that killed him, uh, there are different images throughout scripture that uh, remind us that stones can build and also destroy. 
from uh, Stephen is put to death by stoning. The psalmist in 131 today uses stones as being uh, part of our place before God. Uh, the stone of scone was used as part of the coronation proceedings just yesterday. Stones have meaning from where they came from, how we use them, what they stand for. Uh, and we have to ponder together. It makes us stronger to work together, to interact, and to keep Christ at our center. Um, I recently was shopping at a local farmer's store here in the Schuylerville area, and they had a shelf of pickled peaches, uh, spiced peaches and vanilla peaches. And when I was a little girl, my mom took the four of us little girls and spent, I don't know, it felt like days and days and days making pickled spiced peaches from her grandmother's recipe. And I, I fished it out to see if I could compare the ingredients between the spiced peaches from the farmer's market I bought, I was so excited, uh, and my great grandmother's recipe. And I realized all it's listed on this three by five card in the little wooden box that I somehow inherited um, are ingredients. There's no method. <laughs> so it's just this many uh, bushel of peaches and this many pounds of sugar and this much vinegar and cloves and cinnamon, but there's no what to do with it. Our Bible tells us what to do with being the way and the truth and the life in the world. That's kind of the list of ingredients and also examples of how to serve, but it's by working together that we come up with the method for today. We have the ingredients that God has put together for now to be the way, the truth, and the life, to be the body of Christ in the world to serve. Um, Given that understanding, Jesus is preparing not a, a physical space, but a place in God's family, and God created everyone and all things. Um, it's a place where we can be related to one another and remain also with God as closely as possible to Jesus. If the where we are going is in unity with the Father to follow Jesus, then the way there is through Jesus. And the ingredients, the method is to serve, to love, and to include everyone. Practical Christianity in the world today is a group of people. It's not an individual, it's a congregation who come together to work out who and what the spirit of Christ is among us. That's how we grow deeper and wider and smarter and more faithful, to share our lives as living examples of Christ's way in the world, sharing a common culture. We focus our interactions and our relationships with one another and with the rest of the world as Christians. That's our label on the top of the recipe card, following Christ's way and celebrating along the route till we, one at a time, reach our destination, that room that Christ prepared just for us, and that is eternal life in God's love. So we are actually living stones with Christ as the keystone, and so let us each one have a way about us and walk together as Christ's people. Let us pray. Loving Christ, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. May our understanding of our place on the journey of life, our interactions along this way of yours, be informed by your loving presence. May we each and all become like living stones that lean on you as our keystone for support, for guidance, for strength, 
and for ways to use the gifts that you, O oh God, have given to us to serve as Christ's congregation in this time and in this place. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. us for your grace in the world. 
It is in Christ's name we pray, amen. At this time, we remember Christ through the sacrament of communion, the celebrating the Lord's Supper. In the Reformed Church in America, all who confess Christ as their Lord and Savior are welcomed at the Lord's table. We come not because we are worthy, but because Christ invites us. Come, for all things are now ready. And I invite you to stand with me and answer that question, Christians, what is it we believe by reciting the Apostles' Creed together? <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We join our voices together in singing the response. Holy and right it is, and our joyful duty to give thanks to you, O God, at all times and in all places. O Lord, our creator, almighty and everlasting God. You created heaven with all its hosts and the earth with all its plenty. You have given us life and being and preserve us by your providence. But you have shown us in the fullness of your love by sending into the world your son, Jesus Christ, the eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation, for the precious gift of this mighty savior who has reconciled us to you. We praise and bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. Righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Together we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that, being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith 
and grow up in all things into Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O God, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and having blessed it, he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. After the same manner, also after they had eaten, Christ took the cup, and having blessed it, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The cup which we share is the communion of the blood of Christ. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, since the Lord has now fed us at his table, 
Let us praise God's holy name with heartfelt thanksgiving. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who has not spared his own son, but delivered him up for us all, and given us all things with him. Therefore shall my mouth and heart show forth the praise of the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Acknowledging that we are ever in God's presence and that he is always longing to hear from us, let us bow our heads in prayer this day. We praise and thank you, O Lord, that you have fed us at your table. Grateful for your gifts and mindful of the communion of your saints, we offer to you our prayers for all people. God of compassion, we remember before you the poor and the afflicted, the sick and the dying, prisoners and all who are lonely, the victims of war, injustice, and inhumanity, and all others who suffer from whatever their sufferings may be called. O Lord of Providence, who holds the destiny of the nations in your hand, we pray for our country. Inspire the hearts and minds of our leaders that they, together with all our nation, may first seek your kingdom and righteousness, so that order, liberty, and peace may dwell with your people. O God, the Creator, we pray for all nations and peoples. Take away the mistrust and lack of understanding that divide your creatures. Increase in us the recognition that we are all your children. Savior God, look upon your church in its struggles upon the earth. Have mercy on its weakness. Bring to an end its unhappy divisions and scatter its fears. Look also upon the ministry of your church. Increase its courage, strengthen its faith, and inspire its witness to all people, even to the ends of the earth. Author of grace and God of love, send your Holy Spirit's blessing to your children here present. Keep our hearts and thoughts in Christ Jesus, your Son, our only Savior, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this day is number 115.
service here is ended, our service in the world continues. So go in peace. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.